Hey guys, today in the podcast, we have Jack Dragon, a SP author that mainly specializes in the internet, computers, and emotional experiences. If you enjoy the podcast, make sure you like us on Spotify or give us a review on Apple Podcasts. The more you guys help me out means the more time I can put into these podcasts. Anyway, I hope you enjoy. Thanks. So thanks for coming to the podcast. It's good mm-hmm. to have you, Jack Dragon. Thank um, you. Just before we start off, I'd just like to know, how'd you get into SCP? Was it a recent thing? Uh, I got into it in 2019 in uh, July, August, one of those two. Um, and I I actually didn't know what it was. Like everyone, of course, kind of knows what they're doing yeah. when it comes to I, I knew there was something to do with poor monster excuse me horror monsters and everything um but i was actually i was actually looking for pictures on the internet like scary pictures for a school project oh, really? and yeah. i um i saw it i saw i don't remember what the the article was but i saw this really cool picture and i was like okay that that looks kind of neat it looks kind of cool and i looked and i was looking through and i realized that this was you know there's a whole bunch of entries or you know whatever and i read I think the first one I ever read was uh, "You Are Loved." I can't remember the is it four eight six five one of those. I can't remember. It was in series five, um, mm. and then I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna I'm just gonna join and just be. And I was already getting ideas and stuff. I didn't know any series one article as opposed to wow. like one seven three. I didn't huh. know any articles. I never had any writing experience. I just. I just signed up and then it, there are, I didn't even know what Lovecraft was or like, I didn't know what Dracula <laughs> yeah. was. So I just, I was just like, you know what, let's just do it. And so here I am now with like almost 20 pages on the, the, the site and no writing experience. So, so yeah. So what was that like getting into it? Uh... It was, it was, I got, I, I can't tell you whether not having experience or having experience is a better better way to go because if you have experience you have that 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 style that that type mm-hmm. of writing that you're accustomed to and then bringing yourself out of that and trying to, to write in a more clinical tone and trying trying to be more concise with your words i almost feel like that's almost harder because your brain you've already wired your brain to do one task and you have to completely rework it to do another task mm-hmm. and while i had an easier time because i just was writing in a clinical tone because i i started writing scps before i started writing tales you know goi formats and so I think I, I think for me personally it was a bit easier. And then over time my my clinical tone got better. And then the only problem was was my narrative aspect, like trying to tell a story for every time mm-hmm. that I try to write something because the format restricts it in such a way that it's really hard to get a good story out if you don't know what you're trying to accomplish, what you're trying to do. <laughs> what sorry, <laughs> what you're just what what your mindset going into it is. And so that was something that that was a really steep learning curve for me. At least in the beginning. Yeah. I, I just quick note for people listening through audio. There is a cat in the room. So there's a cat. Wondering. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he's going to be he's going to be screaming from time to time. I don't know what it, it's why he's, he does it. He just I think he's lonely, but I'm yeah. right beside him. And I don't, I don't know. Anyways, he's laying down. He's good now. So well, maybe oh. he won't scream. But uh, but anyway, just the, <laughs> to get our, our focus back. Um, so, so just to recap, you focused mainly on Tales and GUI first and then kind of went into the more clinical stuff, right? No, I actually, I did the opposite. I actually did SCP articles first and then oh, okay. so I was, think okay. I, this year yeah. I just started to write actual tales, like actual tales. Mm. I got, for an entire year and a half, I never wrote tales because I was scared. I didn't know what I was doing. It was like, it was, it was a, it was very worrying because I didn't want to do it wrong. I never wrote like prose or right, any type of style that was different from clinical tone and if you don't know t- clinical tone is not very descriptive it's it is descriptive but it's not and you don't get much imagery from saying you know uh the canister was three meters wide in diameter like it's not yeah. really it's not really all that fun to read sometimes so i had to i had to get i had to get out of that mentality and so i think it's a little easier now for me to switch between whether i want to do a clinical tone or if i want to do a more you know generalized story or more you know classic story but Mm -hmm. yeah it was definitely articles first and then geo then tales and then i just wrote my first goi format yesterday wow okay (laughs) cool good timing (laughs) um 
did you have writing experience before you did all this or was this really like your first thing no this was this was my first time it was it was weird mm -hmm. it, was, it was my very first time I, I mean i've written like everyone's written essays at school everyone's done yeah everyone's done some sort of writing but not i, I think the problem is is that when you're for me for me i realized when i when i joined the site when i started writing that mm -hmm. the problem wasn't that you couldn't write you know like you could it's not that you yeah. can't write something it's it's the problem is that not only are you trying to write a story now which a lot of people aren't really accustomed to mm -hmm. but you're also trying to write it for an audience and that that really messes people up and i'm actually wanting to write an essay at some point with a friend of mine about you know audience and how that affects your writing and how and how you can kind of tailor your works for a specific audience that you're wanting but anyway besides mm -hmm. that um, it was that was the kind of dividend for me was realizing that I'm writing for someone else. I'm, I'm not like I'm writing for myself. I, obviously, you should yeah. always write for yourself. But I'm also trying to I'm trying to write for other people so they can enjoy what I'm enjoying and trying to get that between the two. So that was that was a new that was uh, that's one of the curves that was that came into being a writer. Yeah, I've, I've noticed a lot of new writers and you thankfully avoided this. They kind of just like. For whatever reason, everyone has their own different reasons. They kind of want to like ignore the audience aspect and they write too much for themselves to the point where like mm -hmm. the audience can't really understand what they're trying to get at. Yeah, um, and I I think that I think too that some people when when you talk about that when you're when you're saying you're writing too much for yourself, like there there are times when writing too much for yourself or like too much for yourself is a good thing. Like three nine nine nine, the uh, every uh, I am. I already forgot the title. I am at the center of everything that happens to me. That like that is that is that is what we call event piece. But that 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 was an art. That was an author just trying to get all of his thoughts out. Trying trying to you know say, trying to get something out. Trying to you know it's it's, it's basically three nine 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 is a is a really weird format screw. With format screws, what we call like unclass like non-classical scp articles mm -hmm. and it just goes through these this whole these whole bunch of different things it's 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 really hard to it's really hard to digest it's really hard to understand because you're not really meant to understand it it's like the jumbled thoughts of a pattern screamer of a human we don't really know but you go through it and you realize that this it's it's say it's saying basically that you know it's it's some it's this it's it's the hotel room of a of a 19 year old this doesn't actually say that it's it's the corona 19 2019 coronavirus pandemic it's it's this it's this it's this and it's like basically torturing this this researcher researcher Talleyrand, and that's and it kind of goes through that and it kind and anyway the point i'm trying to make here before i go on a huge tangent um <laughs> is that sometimes it's good to to you know put something out that's only for yourself because it helps you get get that out there but yeah definitely writing for someone else not even for someone else but writing with the intent of entertaining someone else is is the divide that some people have a hard time with it's definitely a balancing act and yeah like you were saying it definitely depends on the story i think you can <laughs> still be very personal but also keep in mind you're communicating more i think the better way of saying it instead of writing is more communicating oh you know, make yeah make sure that definitely. what you're putting out there uh, is legible. Like in the last podcast, Place Hilt was talking about how the first time he wrote his articles, they were so <laughs> jargony <laughs> that like no one oh, could yeah. understand them. No, placeholder so, has placeholder yeah. has uh, has placeholder has really good has really good clinical tone, mm -hmm. and and sometimes it's really hard to understand what's happening because because there's so much of it that he's wanting to say. I mean, when I wrote when I read his articles, there's so much that he's wanting to say, and there's so much there's so much time and in, invest in, in what he's trying to say. Like I remember him talking to me about one of his stories, mm -hmm. and he just went on this huge, huge like series of events that he wanted to do, yeah. and how it connected mm -hmm. to this, like real, like actually talk contacting like actual professors about you know fictional mm -hmm. paid of physics, and it just blew my mind. He's like, it was so deal with cool. That stuff, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's it's definitely it definitely can can get jargoned up and it definitely can get you know m lost in the sauce for yeah. lack of a better term tone, which I think it happens to everyone really. Mm -hmm. No, yeah, it, that's not too. just a placeholder. I see it all the mm -hmm. time. Um, but for you, I'd say you're much more narrative leaning. If we're gonna, for mm -hmm. whatever reason, just compare you to placeholder, just because you oh, said yeah, last yeah. Uh, No, no, yeah, I, I try to stay more narrative leaning. Like I, I mm -hmm. try to be. Uh, however you want to interpret that is up to you, but um, I'm de I'm definitely not as technical with my writing. Not not because I don't want to be. It's just because I, my brain hurts when I when I try to write anything more than hmm. 
uh, the 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 tree grew five inches, and you know some <laughs> others might like to to talk about how the branches also grew, and and you know how how the the sunlight looked on the the branches of the tree, or how what time of day it was, and it it, it makes me hurt my head sometimes. But anyways, <laughs> but okay, so. Uh, one thing I was actually curious about, and let me double check, but I believe you were saying that you actually have, you ended up getting articles in series three and four. And for people who don't know, normally when after a series is done, so basically there's like a writing competition, you can write for a new series for X amount of time and then they close the competition or it fills up. I think it depends. Um, mm -hmm. But for you, you came in after three and four were closed. So yep, yep. how's that happen? So I, I should preface that slot the, we call them slot numbers like yeah. the number the you know that designation is just a slot. I should preface that you know slots the, the the number on your article really does not matter. Like you're there's no difference between an article and series six. I mean there is obviously like a a, a narrative difference, but if mm -hmm. you're just looking at it from a uh, at a stand like a, a face value. There's no no real distinguishing one no distinguishing difference between SCP five thousand one hundred fifty and SCP four thousand three hundred twenty six. Like they're they're all the same story. They're just they're just they're just named different basically. Yeah. So I, I should preface that. Now actually getting the slot sometimes sometimes things happen. Uh, sometimes articles. The, someone notices that they've been plagiarized, um, so they'll get deleted if there's any plagiarism that's detected. Sometimes um, authors will delete them on their own. Sometimes you know they they just don't like their work anymore and they'll delete mm. them. Uh, other times they they might just get deleted because people take a look at them and say, you know what, I don't actually like this anymore. And so they'll downvote it into deletion. Oh really? So then they actually I didn't know then, they then that. staff will actually have to yeah yeah, yeah. every article is prone to. Every you know, not staff like pages that need to be on the wiki for whatever reason, but like mm -hmm. articles can always be upvoted and downvoted into deletion. There's no, there's no like an article like an a lot of sometimes even in series one articles will get downvoted into le to, to into deletion, and some new author may jump in. That's what happened to uh, uh, I can't remember six one eight maybe six one eight uh, uh, I can't even think for the life of me all the other ones. Uh, but there are a few more that, you know, some of the newer authors today, one of the series one articles got just happened to get deleted and then they mm -hmm. just replaced it. Um, so that's what I kind of did. Uh, I don't really know why they were moved or why they were deleted for whatever reason. I just saw them one day that they were, you know, they were available. And I just said, you know what, I have a story that I was writing here and have it. So that's that's how I got the, the two different slot numbers, which is cool. Yeah. It's like it's like a rare it's like a rare Pokemon card. You know? like <laughs> yeah. you get it and you're like, oh, this is super cool. Not a lot of people have this now. Mm -hmm. Uh, but if you just look at it at the face value, like there's no difference between a Charmander and a in a uh Man, so every time I try to get references, know. there we go. <laughs> every time I try, I get, I always forget worries, right at the moment. But no, it's kind of like that. But no, there's no real, there's nothing significant about it. It's just a cool little new thing. Well, I'm actually curious. Do you know, like, is it when it hits X amount of negative points? That's when it gets deleted? Yes, yes. Okay. So when an article gets under negative 10, uh, they, it gets put on a list. It gets put on a on a deletion list, and then mm -hmm. it, the article has twenty four hours to get out of the oh, negative wow. ten before it gets deleted. But in some, and sometimes they articles, do. sometimes articles will go to negative ten and then will jump back up to positive. That's what happened mm -hmm. to five thousand and four uh, megalomania. Uh, oh, it's yeah, a, yeah, it's yeah. a five con article. Uh, five, five con is five, SCP five thousand contest. So every time that a new series opens up, uh, they have a con they have a huge contest to see who's going to get the, the the five the, the X thousand number because mm -hmm. you know that's the that's a really cool number that no one ever really gets. And a lot of people when they go on the first the wiki first they look up one thousand, they look mm -hmm. up two thousand, three thousand, four thousand, and so on. Um, so that article it's about Donald Trump. That one that one actually got downvoted into deletion it was it was actually malicious and a lot of people were doing it out of you know malice they didn't they didn't like the fact that donald trump was a scp article <laughs> um and then it jumped back up and now it's like at 300 400 it's ridiculous it, it's crazy what it is now but um it's, it's a good article it's just yeah it, it happens sometimes i think uh 
a lot of people. So originally, I thought it was actually about Undertale. <laughs> yeah, Just, yeah, no, that some, yeah. Um, there's there's Discord bots and there's uh, IRC bots uh, that when you look up an article, it'll bring it up or whatever. Mm. And one of the Discord bots uh, will bring up whenever I bring up. 5004 megalomania mm-hmm. I, it'll bring it up and then it'll just bring up a picture of donald trump and it's it always reminds me that this is not about undertale which is a shame yeah. because undertale was was a great uh, it was a great game i miss undertale man. i thought I there was undertale. somewhere out there an undertale scp i know some people have written them i don't know if they've actually like stuck on i the, don't uh, site. know I don't know if there's an Undertale SCP, but I do know there's a Five Nights at Freddy's SCP. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I only know that because I wrote it. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, there, there's two Among Us SCPs. Uh, oh, really? I should yeah, know that. Yeah, there's two Among Us SCPs. The, the, the author who wrote it, the first one, Tan Honey, the, the person who wrote 5000. Oh, uh, Tan Honey wrote it. Yeah, I didn't Tan know Honey that, wrote actually. it. And it's actually... Tanahoney writes really good articles. Um, and so when he wrote the first Among Us SCP, some people liked it. And then and then Vulcan, the, the YouTuber, did a video on it. And it oh, just got that's massively. Right. That's right. It just, did, it just got massively downvoted. And it became hugely controversial. Like it got like 300 votes like total. And like wow. f- it was only at like 50 upvotes or something stupid. And I should preface that over. Oh, Oh, the upvote downvote system is really dumb. Like mm-hmm. anyone you ask about it will always say that it's stupid or it's, yeah. you know there's things that could be improved. But because it's our only really it's our only gauge of whether or not an article is good, and I shouldn't even say that because votes don't indicate quality; Popular, they indicate yeah. popularity, right? Mm-hmm. But um, so he wrote it. People like 300 votes plus 50 everyone people were a lot of people were saying that it was good and then a lot of other people were saying you know why would you do this like this shouldn't be an scp which is mm-hmm. also a dumb idea like you don't there's nothing should be an scp like there's no nothing there's no idea set in stone or concrete that defines what an article should be like that yeah. that isn't up to really anyone that's up to the, the community because they they're the ones who decide who get to who get to who, if it gets to stay on the website or if it doesn't. But at mm-hmm. the same time, like there should be no there should be no limiter on you know creativity. Anyways, um, so then he wrote another one and that was like 100, 115. I can't remember right now. I haven't seen it in a minute. But that one was really good too. So there's two mm-hmm. of those now. But I digress. There's there's a whole other there's a, there's a Minecraft SCP too, and then you could just go on and on. Yeah, I've, I've heard that of, one. Yeah. Well, there's a whole bunch of other references. Since you mentioned too. it, do you want to talk a bit about your Five Nights at Freddy uh, SCP? <laughs> I can. Uh, that one. That one was an interesting one. Um, it was. It was co-authored mm-hmm. by Celeste Cara. I can't remember if that was. I can't remember if that's still the username or not. I think so. Um, and it. We didn't. It really isn't a Five Nights at Freddy's SCP. It takes inspiration, and there's aspects of it that have the FNAF game. So basically, SCP-5963, the 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 FNAF SCP that everyone calls it. Um it's basically there's a there's a pizza place. There's a, it's called Showbiz Pizza Place. This place mm-hmm. actually used to exist back in the day. Um and they have these arcade machines and these arcade machines they're they're really weird. They don't no one really knows what's wrong with them, but there's from time to time these games will mess up. There's like there's all the popular Arcadia games. Uh uh there's like Pong, mm-hmm. there's at there the Asteroids game, uh, the Moonlander game, um, and they all, sometimes they'll mess up and they'll do weird things and they'll sometimes mess with you know they'll mess with the restaurant. The the lights will start flickering sometimes or the animatronics will you know do weird things and they'll mm-hmm. be erratic, and so basically the foundation takes these takes these arcade machines, they lock them up, and they and they're trying to to investigate to see what's happened because. At the same time that the this are these arcade machines are acting up, there's there's this huge there's this huge kidnapping. This huge you know, kidnapping. There's someone kidnapping children, and they don't mm-hmm. no one knows who these children are, um, but they're gone, and and they're trying to figure out what's happening. This is all happening in in a, in a town called Marionette, Wisconsin, uh, and so the foundation comes in. They re, they interview the manager of the showbiz pizza place, and they're like, hey, uh, what's going on? And you know they talk, and they realize that there's showbiz is actually getting money from a, a goi called arcadia arcadia mm. is this, this big bad you know 
video game company that the foundation is looking at and looking towards and you know the the owner of this arcadia goi is, is named nolan bushnell and people are trying to look for him because no one has been you know doing satanic things you know drug dealing like crazy stuff and so the foundation's like talking to this manager and this manager had connections with nolan bushnell and they're like hey do you know where he is like what why, what are these what are these machines doing why are they acting up like can we can we take them and so they, they're allowed to take him. And at the same time, the manager that they just previously uh, interviewed, his name's Michael Warren, he, he leaves. He like he runs away. He, he disappears. And then the next part of the article goes into like experimenting with these, these machines, these arcade games. And they're realizing that there's something inside them. There's, you know, they'll do erratic things. And then at the very end, you realize that the art and you realize that these arcade machines, they're, they're the children, obviously that got kidnapped mm -hmm. and they're, they're basically screaming for help. They're, they're wanting help. They're wanting to get out and they don't know why they're trapped in here. And so it, and it, it basically ends with the, the foundation communicating with these arcade machines, trying to figure out what's wrong. And then it ends with, you know, this is, the, this is your guys's fault. Like if you guys didn't exist, I wouldn't be in this arcade machine. And so it mm. goes into all that. It's like a twisted version of Tron, basically. Yeah, basically. <laughs> Tron, FNAF, yeah. Uh, that's cool. I mean, so I actually, this kind of uh, popped into my mind. I don't know if you know this answer, but um, I'm curious legally how it works when you have like a, a, a game that's copyrighted and then you make an article that's Creative Commons. How's that? It's a very interesting gray area legally that ends up happening. Um, it's been done so, so many times I, before, I, but yeah, I can't say I can't say the copyright with the content of the article. I don't know if you can legally claim a copyright on a you know on an article like that yeah. because unless it's unless it's a flat out unless it's a flat out copy, which yeah. will be which wouldn't be a copyright claim, would be a plagiarism claim. Mm -hmm. um, but you cannot take you cannot take photos of copyright copywritten yeah like, things they they those will get removed mm -hmm. so i don't i don't think it ever really gets to a point that there's an actual copyright being claimed and, and, and also too like it's not the scp foundation a, a lot of times articles are not very popular not because mm -hmm. they're not good but because they just don't get enough attention there's six thousand yeah. articles um so to to get to that point where you're actually getting copyright claims Somehow, I don't. I don't even think you could. But if you yeah, did, I don't know if you could. Yeah, um, I don't even think it would matter because there's not. There's no one else that is really looking at it. It's a very niche audience that's really digesting this information. Mm -hmm. That's really taking it in. So I don't even know if, if a copyright claim would even be worth the trouble because it, it's yeah, so tiny. I'm assuming it's basically just like a form of fan fiction, basically. Yeah, at, at it's, most, it's yeah. basically what it is. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and well before the point that there's ever a copyright claim being made or if that even is a possibility, articles will usually be taken down for plagiarism yeah. um, or, for, or whatever else because that's, that is what it is, basically, is plagiarism. Mm -hmm. So before we get too far away from the uh, series three and four, there was one specific one. Let me just get my questions up. Uh, SP2744. Do you want to talk about that one real quick? <laughs> I can. Um, this one this one was originally it was originally a rewrite for a deleted article that was doing really bad. Hmm. Um, it was it was a, basically the article was a weed dimension. It was oh, this, this okay. weed dimension. I see the connection. Um, and so I don't really remember. I have the I have the source code of the original article somewhere. Um, basically, it's this weed dimension. These researchers go in and they see a, a weed monster or whatever. It's like a, <laughs> it's a really it's a really generic, really generic uh -huh. murder monster <laughs> article, and okay. it just had a weed in it. And I looked at it and I read it, and of course it was I, I didn't I, I wasn't really a fan of it, mm -hmm. but I thought it was just so funny. Like I, I I don't know why I was giggling at the concept of a weed dimension. I was like I have to remake this. I have to. It sounds I like a Rick and Morty episode. Uh, yeah, a weed <laughs> dimension. I was like I got to. Oh no, my cat is, now got his toy. We're all doomed. Um. <laughs> okay, he's not playing with his toy anymore. Um. Anyway, so this article stemmed from that. Mm -hmm. I posted it once before. It did okay. And then I decided to delete it because I think there was things that I could do. So I tried posting it again after I rewrote it. That one actually got, I actually self-deleted that once it got into the negatives. Hmm. Um, 
<laughs> it was up for like five minutes, I think. I got really irritated at something and I just deleted it. So then I reposted it again, finally. And this is the third version. Um, mm. And so it didn't really change much from between iterations. But this one, uh, in, in the story, uh, there's a there's a computer program. And the, the foundation was that they're, the foundation making this computer program, this website that they're wanting, you know, researchers who were affected by memetics or affected by anomalous phenomenon. They're wanting researchers to use this program and to base, it's basically like a therapeutical program that helps, that's supposed to help people, you know, get on track. If they're, if they're affected by something, it'll, it'll diminish those effects. And so the round, the fact, as they're making this program, uh, as they're making this program, they're, they're testing it. They're saying it. And finally, like, okay, we're going to – we now have the website. We now have the program set up. We just need to insert the anomaly that we're wanting to use. And they, they insert a, a redacted anomaly into it. They're saying, okay, this will, this will, this will neutralize any mimetic, any, any anomalous effects in people. And we'll be able to use this to help people out. And so everyone, everyone's congregating. The, the team congregates to, to fix this, this – to basically make this program mm. and they they finally get the 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 anomaly that they're wanting to use inside the program they're like okay it's good we still need to test it we don't really know what's going to happen now that there's a new anomaly in this in this website program we, there's there's still too much that we need to do don't touch it we're gonna we're gonna seal it away and no one's gonna be able to use it so everyone's like okay we're not gonna use it anymore no one we're not gonna we're not gonna mess with it. Everyone just back away slowly and tomorrow we'll get back to it and we'll close and we'll make sure that it's safe to use. And so everyone, you know, walks away, but they forget that there is an there's one researcher who didn't who decided not to come in. All of this is happening online because this is yeah. right during the coronavirus pandemic. Um, so they're all doing like an IRC chat, they're all doing like a, a communication chat to basically communicate. And they didn't. They they totally forgot about the researcher that that didn't come to work that day, and so the researcher comes in after getting a notification saying that you know you need to be there, and she and the researcher's like, okay, I'm here. What do I need to do? And they realize that no one's in the chat room at that time. And they look around and they notice that the the the, the project, the program that they're using on is is open. It's like, huh? Okay, so I'm gonna go. I, this looks like something I need to use. Like, they, there's obviously a reason that they have this here. I'm gonna go access it. And then they realize that the page is locked and they unlock the page basically because they're a part of that admin team. Mm -hmm. And then basically the the program just breaks. Everything just breaks. And the the found the researcher in question is trying to fix it. They don't know what they're trying to fix and it keeps breaking more. <laughs> and so finally they're like, I'm done. No more. I'm gonna I'm gonna just leave it alone. I'm gonna go get help. This is not good. So they leave, they leave the chat room, and then there's a new addendum that starts. And then the new addendum is like, so basically what happened was there is an incident that happens. Um, there's a there's a huge incident that happens at the site that this program is being worked on. No one knows what's happening. There's this this is huge incident, this huge containment breach that's happening, and everyone's just being everyone's just being really weird. Everyone is acting like if they're high on something. Mm -hmm. And so the 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 head of the researcher in charge of the whole 2744 project is emailing everybody being like, what happened? Why who touched the project? Why 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 is everyone coming being weird and strange? And so the the previous researcher who left who, who wasn't there who came back and you know ruined the project <laughs> sends an email and is like, you know what? I think that was me. I think that I did that and, and I was trying to look for help and now everything's messed up. And then they're like, also, as I was looking, as I was seeing, as I was trying to figure out what happened, I, I also happened to find a discussion board where I, that I posted with the link to the, the, the program, to the, the website. So basically everyone saw this, this website link, clicked on it and got affected by this anomaly. And... I guess I should have prefaced this first, my bad. The the anomaly works by reading someone's personality, reading someone's, you know, traits mm -hmm. and kind of catering to them, kind of catering the, the, the website to them. So that, that kind of, it's kind of a therapeutic process. But what happened was because this researcher who was high at the time accessed this 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 program and broke the program now it's permanently stuck on their personality and their personality is always high so in, mm -hmm. in retrospect it always causes everyone to use it to become high yeah and so and then it ends up having the benefit of like lower yeah, yeah. work stress and have a kind of has these all yeah. these semi-positive effects so it's yeah, being kind of yeah. awesome 
But uh, yeah. well, one question I had was why did it get stuck on his personality um, instead uh, of just switching? So I try to leave this open ended. Uh, mm-hmm. This is one of those things where I spending a lot of time trying to dissect the reasons why in a, in a fictional universe might have might have drug things along too much. Um, basically, what happened, how it breaks. The reason that I gave was that yeah. the researcher, as they were trying to revert the changes that they made to the program, the if for whatever reason it just didn't work, it just corrupted. Mm. Like the, the revert, the, trying to revert the revisions, it didn't revert anymore, and it, it would corrupt all the previous reversion that the revisions that they were wanting to make, which means that it was permanently stuck, and they couldn't mm. revert it back to the original because all those were corrupted. So that was kind of the reason that I gave for why it broke, and it didn't just you know fix itself. Okay. Because it was basically caught in this weird in-between stage. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense, yeah. Um, Sweet. Yeah, that was the, that was the reason. <laughs> um, and so, it's a really stupid article. Okay, so that that, that explains the weed connection. Because I was kind of curious, like, why? why? Because in the beginning of the article, too, there's a notification saying, like, please don't, like, use weed while on the on the job. And basically, yeah. I found that kind of funny. Um, so I, I actually, I've actually never smoked weed before ever. I don't even, I've never smoked weed before and I didn't go to anybody to, I didn't go to anybody to ask like what happens when you're high. I just, mm. I thought about it and I just wrote whatever came to my mind. So there's, there's like a log after they figure out who caused the containment breach that goes through, you know, people being affected yeah. by this, the, the program, everyone being high and, and I don't. I didn't know how to how people were high. I looked up a few stories on the internet, which is not a good idea in retrospect. Um, and I just went off. I just based off those. And so there's one where the guy is in a containment cell, looking at a an anomaly, and he you know compliments a a, a, a canate anomaly, a canate like a dog mm-hmm. monster. And there's another one where this guy is in the center hall, and he downs an entire like canister with presumably full of just water or something um oh, downs I thought it was it in front of everybody. or it could have been booze yeah. um and there's another one where the, the site director is in her office with a whole bunch of cliff bar wrappers everywhere and she's just sitting there because she's just like got the munchies and she doesn't yeah. know what she's doing and just falls asleep um i had a lot of fun writing that and i didn't even know how to write it so that was that was a, that was a nice experience that's funny so I'm guessing you just read a bunch of Reddit <laughs> posts and stuff like that. Oh yeah, it was it was a good time. It was it's like eleven o'clock at night, and I was looking it up, trying to figure out what I was doing. There's some really weird. I I actually remember I remember looking up exactly in Google, uh, really weird weed experiences, and that was what it led me to. It was a whole bunch of Reddit posts and a whole mm. bunch of blog posts, and it was it was a fun time. It was a fun time. That's what. Uh, so speaking of eating chocolate. I thought we could transition over to. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, this will be fun. So SCP five three four six, which you told me was your favorite that you've written. Oh yeah, um, I love. I, I was really happy with this one. So and it has to do with Forrest Gump for people who don't yeah. know. So yeah, oh, yeah, break that down for us. Okay, uh, this I should preface that um, SCP five three four six is based off real events, based off is based off real life um interpret that however you want and i'm going to now talk about it um so there's an anomaly that every time people watch forrest gump there's a small small chance that when people notice the life is a box of chocolate line life is a box of chocolate lines they realize that the line is not correct um the line is not right and if you look at back at it people people will always say you know when they quote that line, everyone will say life is like a box of chocolates because everyone thinks that's what it is. But in actuality, when you watch the movie, the actual line is life was like a box of chocolates. Um, is that actually so, true, by the way? Yeah. Yeah, it's oh, true. Fuck. Like, oh, wow. Yeah, the, the actual huh. line is mama always said life was like a box of chocolates. But for whatever reason, everyone thinks it's life is like a box of chocolates. Yeah. Um, and there's there's an actual there's an actual there's an actual reason behind that. I can, mm. I'll go into it as I talk about the article. Mm. But anyways, there's a small chance that people will see this line and they'll realize it and they'll actually start obsessing over this line. And they'll start obsessing over it. And they'll they'll be like, why is this line so different? And it usually happens to you know conspiracy theorists, uh, film analysts, um, anyone who's really like into movies. They'll they'll notice this line. Um, and what happens is at one point, as, 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 after they're obsessing over it, they just die. They just they they just die from head trauma. Mm-hmm. They don't know why. 
And so if the Foundation notices this anomaly and realizes that there's a there's a post on Parawatch.net. Parawatch.net is a is a group of interest. It's basically like Reddit. It's like a creepypasta yeah, Reddit. Creepypasta. It's like creepypasta.com. Mm -hmm. Um so they go they go they take they bring down this this Parawatch forum post and and they they post it on the the the, the article. It's basically this forum post talks about a guy named Rage the Comic. And Rage the Comic notices this line and, and he and he goes to parawatch.net and he's like okay guys i just noticed something like i just noticed that this line is not right why is no one talking about this and then he goes into it and he's like yeah i know and i know everyone will say that this is the mandela effect and the mandela yeah. effect in case no one knows is is a is a no one really knows what it really is the 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 wide consensus that is that it, it's a situation it's a phenomenon and when people will just forget people will just misplace memories of things that's why for example if you look at kit at kit kat bars mm -hmm. how how do you remember kit kat bars being like how do you how do you remember it being spelled was was the kit was kit cat was kit cat spaced no space was, was kit cat together yeah i remember it together yeah I th there was a time where kit kat was actually hyphenated i think it was either that or if it, it was it was another chocolate, but I think it was Kit Kat. Mm -hmm. There was actually a hyphen, but everyone thinks that there was no space in it. But there was actually a hyphen between Kit Kat, I huh. think, at one point. I don't remember. Um, and then there's other things, too, like when did Mandela die? And a lot yeah, of people will yeah. say 1993 in, in his cell. Mm -hmm. But when he, he actually died in 2013 after being president for um, South Africa. That's where the name originates from. Um, but... Anyways, yeah. besides that, I just well, just side note. I find it so weird because I feel like people who are younger, like us, we've never thought Mandela died in a jail cell. Like I feel like yeah. everyone I've met around my age never thought that. So that's why it was confused me. I was called Mandela. I always like to think of it the Bernstein Bear effect because oh yeah yeah. So it's the Bernstein Bears. Yeah. But growing up, like I this is for me. This is like my personal. Uh, struggle, I guess, but oh, I yeah. swear it was Bernstein, like Stein, <laughs> yeah. Bears, Bernstein. There's Bears. another one too, and and John F. Kennedy's car before the moment he got shot. How many people were in his car? Everyone's I seen that. Four, clip. right? I don't know. Four. There's five. There's five. There's five people, but everyone either say three, everyone will say four, but there's actually five people in the car. Um. Huh. So it's, it's a really weird thing. It's a really weird thing that sometimes happens for, for whatever reason. And that line, that life is a box of chocolate lines, that one is also, you know, this yeah. Mandela effect. Mm -hmm. So anyways, going back to the article, um, you know, Parawatch users, they see it and they're like, okay, I can kind of see this being a thing. And you know, some people really like it. And some people are like, what are you doing? Like, why are you talking about Forrest Gump? Like all the things you could be talking about right now, you're talking about Tom Hanks. Like why? And so anyways, Rage the Comic continues. He updates his forum post and he's like, you know, I cannot stop thinking about this line. Like, I don't, I don't understand why it's like this. And then he goes into the movie and he's like, you know, I re I watched the movie again and Forrest Gump is is not right anymore. Like I watch him and he and he's not he's no longer the lovable character that everyone loved. He's no longer this this goofy uh, special you know guy that goes around saving you know the world, going going through wars, meeting presidents, um, getting Jenny. He's no longer like that. He's he's staring at me. He's looking at me. He's 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 being malicious. Like I can I can feel him being malicious at me. Like he knows something is wrong. Um, and, and it's freaking me out. And I need someone to like basically come here and tell me what if no one else realizes this, if everyone sees what's happening. And so Parawatch users again are like, what are you doing? Like, why do you just stop talking? Like, why are you talking about this? It's been explained. Like, move on. Life is a box mm -hmm. of chocolate line is, is, is done. No more. This is all happening in like 2012 for reference, by the way. Mm. Um, so finally, the third post that he makes to Parawatch is basically, you know, he he's like, okay, I know he's in here with me now. Like, I know... I know Forrest Gump is in here inside watching me. Like I, I feel as I, I see him watching me from the corners of my eyes sometimes, and he's he's just staring at me. I don't know what's happening, and I'm scared because I don't I don't understand why Forrest Gump is watching me. Um, and so finally he just ends it. He's like, I'm done. Okay, Rage the Comic is signing out for now. And so finally they that that was the part that was the Parawatch forum post that yeah. gets removed. And so finally they 
they they were like, okay, there's may the foundation's like, okay, something may be anomalous here because his his behavior is strange. Like, there's no way that Forrest Gump should be watching him. So they go sit out an investigation and they find him in Chicago, Illinois, in an apartment, and they see that he died. They see that he died from head trauma. And while they're doing their investigation, they see that he has an updated forum post. Like he was gonna update his forum post, but died before he could. And, and this forum post is basically like he's in here with me. I don't, I can't call the police in time. They wouldn't believe me. He's staring at me. I see him in the window. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna die here. I don't want to die, but I hear him, and I'm, I'm I want to scream, but I'm too, I'm too scared to throw my life away to, to, to die right now. And then the the, par the forum post ends with you know, Rage the Comic is signing out. And so the foundation, after getting that foreign post, they also get a note that was left behind near the body. Yeah. And it says, uh, Mama always said to stand up the snitches. And so that's how the article ends. Yes. So what was that about? <laughs> I, I had a question. So that one, that I wanted to leave that as open-ended as possible. Mm -hmm. I wanted people to be like, why would Forrest Gump do this? Like why? Because presumably it's Forrest Gump. Yeah. Like why would... Who? What is? What is snitching? And my my, my I don't want my interpretation to be the be all end all because mm. I like when people come up with things. I remember bringing it up to someone and they said that Forrest Gump was a pattern screamer. That was pretty fun. Um, but my interpretation of it was that the life was a box of chocolates line was the correct line, mm. and he's propagate the uh. the user is propagating this wrong this false line mm -hmm. and and for i'm sorry if i mixed that life life is like a box of chocolate lines was the intended line that's yeah. why everyone remembers it mm -hmm. and and out, for whatever reason forrest gump says life was like a box of chocolates line and so when they go in and they're going in and they're they're basically you know confessing saying all this stuff it, it kills him and says don't don't be snitching on me don't 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 be telling the fact that you know that was the correct line because i messed up or whatever yeah so that was kind okay. of my interpretation of yeah it. um it was a really stupid article I, I i had a lot of fun with that one um it was really dumb it almost <laughs> it almost made me think of like a south park episode the idea oh, yeah. of like yeah. <laughs> you know some like innocent kind like a mickey mouse or something like and he's like this horrible person it, Oh yeah, it's it's a lot of people actually really enjoy that. A lot of people yeah. enjoy the um, make turning things into uh, decrepit evil things. Well, speaking of Tanhony, what he did with Garfield is a good example of the uh, the Garfield monster. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, that one. So it's funny about that one is that a lot I've I've had so many times where people will be like, "Your article reminds me of that exact article." Three mm -hmm. one is it three one six six three one six six. Yeah, that. something like that. It's, it's, I still it's need to read it. I still need to read it. But I, I, everyone tells me that all the time. I think it's kind of funny, but yeah, that, I really like that article. I was really proud of that one. Um, the other thing I want to bring up, you had that cool like John Travolta deep fake. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> so was that – and the way I, I read it was basically they were like alternate timelines where there's other uh, Forrest Gump films that were made, but they had different actors – um, and I think you were saying the story behind that was Tron Travolta was actually approached first to play as Forrest Gump. So, yeah. And also that was supposed to be an Easter egg. I, I didn't think anyone would click on the links. That's why some uh, of the links yeah. don't actually yeah, work. They don't work. Yeah. Um, but I, I thought that, I thought that, I thought it was funny for two reasons. One, I thought if I put it in there, it would kind of solidify that, you know, these are conspiracy theorists. Mm -hmm. They, there's no real basis of, of proof behind it. So mm -hmm. when you see a deep fake of John Travolta, it kind of solidifies that these are, these are conspiracy theorists. There's no, there's no really rhyme or reason as to what they're thinking or, you know, sometimes or most of the time. Yeah. Um, but there, there is, there is something there. There is something backing them up. It's not proof, but it, it's a belief. And that's why there's a, there's a deep fake basically, um, where John Travolta is, is Forrest Gump. Um, I just thought that was a, a nice little addition. Basically, I wanted I didn't want the links to work at all because mm. I wanted people to fill in the blanks for themselves. Like, okay, there's proof now that th this guy is not just ranting about whatever. Like, yeah. he's s showing proof of how these are all alternate timelines of, or how this could be, you know, a calling for something. But yeah, that was a largely just... I, I put that in after like a month two months after oh, the article wow. was posted so no but yeah that was that was a huge reason i also didn't explain how it was from real life how it was yeah, it yeah, was, yeah. Mm -hmm. my uh it's funny uh 
some of my friends are actually like legit conspiracy theorists and we were talking about that exact line um and i thought about it and, he, and they were telling me how they were afraid that Forrest Gump is going to come after him or something like jokingly. It wasn't yeah. like an actual thing, but they were afraid of that. And that, that kickstarted it. And, and also the Mandela effect too is, is a real mm-hmm. thing that happens. So that's kind of the whole real life, you know, real life events or whatever. So that, yeah. that was the kind of the origin. That was the reason behind it. For me with the Berenstein bears one, I've heard the conspiracy theory that like, so Stein is like a common German Jewish name. It's also a German name. Uh huh. So Bernstein sounds like a um, like an Ashkenazi Jewish last name, and so people created this conspiracy theory that the reason why it's Bernstein bears now, and it sat, it basically it was like the publishers or the creators were actually anti-Semitic, and they actually want to erase mm-hmm. the Jewish comparison uh, of oh, the wow. original name. I'm pretty sure none of that's true, and it actually was always Bernstein bears. Um, mm-hmm. But actually, no, someone did pull an old copy that said Bernstein bears. It was like one of the, huh. fr- it was like one of the very early, early prints of it. So I was mm-hmm. like, hmm, yeah. the plot thickens. The plot thickens. My <laughs> <laughs> um, cat is screaming again. I actually didn't hear. Um, oh, sweet. <laughs> but um, ah, there was another, oh yeah, so deep fakes. Um, it just made me think the way you used it in the context of the article, how like, I feel like the use of deep fakes for conspiracy theories are only going to get more and more common oh yeah as the years oh, yeah, progress definitely. i mean people are already kind of someone are. someone actually just got arrested uh a woman got arrested recently actually i don't remember where it was um basically she was putting deep she was posting deep fakes of of you know these minors these teenagers mm-hmm. it was for it was it was during a cheerleading competition or whatever where her daughter was going into this cheerleading competition and this mother basically put deep fakes of all of her their competitors of you know doing really bad things doing really really bad really oh, porn i'm assuming or things. things like that oh it was it was really bad like it you it was it was awful like especially of minors she just yeah. got arrested for that and they were deep fakes like no one if you didn't really look much at it like they were being submitted as like actual things like hey look at this look at this person that they're doing all this stuff it's they're going into your cheerleading competition it's she's competing against my daughter like you guys shouldn't let let her go into this cheerleading Man. competition yeah it's crazy. That is crazy it's scary it is it's terrifying but i mean that's pretty soon the whole can you really believe in your own eyes is going to be hard there, to prove. There is hope. There is hope. There the is reason hope. why is because I, I learned about this. So I come from a film background, but a lot of people don't know that with cameras, the sensor, the camera sensor, there's a very specific code that it creates on the original video. And so oh, basically yeah. there's actually still a way to validate and verify footage. Um, mm-hmm. I think, I don't know, like the only issue is like if you start exporting footage and putting it through programs and stuff, does oh, that yeah. code get lost? You know, so there's kind of a weird, I don't know how far it goes, but there is an ability to verify footage to oh, a certain yeah, degree. Yeah. I mean, I mean, they're always, they're always fun to weigh. I mean, I'm sure at one point they'll, someone will f- probably figure out how to, you know, tag, you know, videos or something or whatever, kind of similar to, you know, that code of, of the, yeah. the video recording and, and keep that tag consistent, even through exports or whatever. And this is all going to the hypotheticals. Yeah. I, I had no, no basis to, to prove this all off of. But, well, I will say against, um, against that real quick is that, uh, this, every single camera, I believe they're, they're like actual serial code that oh, yeah. the camera sensor is part of the code. So that's how you can verify it. Cause you can literally trace oh, yeah. it back like to Mac the addresses. individual. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like Mac addresses. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 But it, there's an arms race basically going on where you have like, oh, yeah. Yeah. people keep trying to outcompete that and create false validation. Oh yeah. And, and, and it's only going to, it's only going to, only going to worsen when, when you, when you think about the amount of technology that's coming out every day, like mm-hmm. the amount of new software that's coming out. Yeah. And so it's, I mean, is it a huge deal? Not yet. I think if it's going to be a huge deal, maybe. There's no real reason to really back that up just yet. Um, well, because for one, people with you know videography background or you know, photography background or, mm-hmm. or video editing background or or people who are you know creative enough to really sit down and be like and you know mess with the individual you know shadow shadows in the, the person's face or how how their face forms how they move in 3d yeah. space like that is not a talent that everyone shares and i don't think that everyone's going to unilaterally wake up one day and be like you know what 
deep fakes. That's what I want to do. I don't, I don't know if that's the only issue is how easy deep fakes are. You don't even need those skills. I mean, so it's not super easy right now, but basically all it is for people who don't know is you basically get a ton of reference photos of the subject. Mm -hmm. So say John Travolta for his case, who use your, the video you linked. Basically what you want to do is you have your original video. So the Forrest Gump scene, and then you take all these reference photos of John Travolta's face. And what you want to do is that's the real work is finding all those photos. And then what you do is you dump it into a, a program and the program tries to basically fit all those pictures to recreate a 3D structure of John Trudel's face oh, yeah. over Tom Hanks' face. There's um, actually an app right now that you can download called Wombo. Yes, um, that, ew. Yeah. <laughs> Creepy. You, you, you post a static photo of yourself or of whoever. That's what's crazy. It's, it's one photo, And right? the program will will measure your face and it'll, it'll measure, you know, the proportions of your face that'll animate your face basically. And there's a series of songs that you can click once you get the, your photo processed and it will basically map out like the expressions of whatever. And so it'll make your, your picture look like it's singing along to the song. Yeah. And it's really weird. I actually have a, a, a video somewhere of my, my discord profile photo doing the whole singing, dancing thing. It's really weird. Um, but that, yeah, that, that shows that you how a huge tangent. crazy the tech is getting. It's not perfect, oh, obviously, yeah. but the fact yeah, that yeah. you don't need, originally you'd need like hundreds of thousands of reference files to even do something like oh, that. Yeah. And now you're literally doing it with one photo. So that shows you mm-hmm. how quickly things are advancing. There's oh, a great yeah. uh, channel, Quarter Digital. They have a whole, like a bunch of like how it's made videos on how they did deep fake stuff. I think they've recreated one of the scenes from The Scorpion with Dwayne The Rock Johnson's face. So basically they use deep fakes to make a better CGI face than the original film. Um, oh, uh, that's so it, scary. That was, it was interesting. And then they also did one where they had they brought in an actor who kind of looked like Tom Cruise, and they pretended like Tom Cruise was actually visiting their studio. Um, that <laughs> that one was pretty like creepy. Like that was pretty realistic. But uh-huh. they also specifically picked someone who looked like Tom Cruise. So oh yeah, it's not like as uh, out there. The the ones that actually really scare me are the ones that actually emulate voices. So I think there was one with Obama. Oh yeah. Where they basically there's one with Obama. I think there's one with Donald Trump. Yeah, I think too. there's one. That's all about Trump. Yeah, and it's not really hard either. It's it's mm-hmm. a scary thing. Like especially if you have someone that sounds yeah. that can impersonate them really well. Um, the one that you're talking about with Obama, I think that was actually featured on Comedy Central. Maybe, hmm. uh, maybe not. It was. I can't remember. It was Key Key and Peele. Maybe Peel. one of the actors yeah. for Key and Peele uh, sat down. I can't remember who it was. Maybe it was key, um, and they they did this recording, and someone went in and they and they you know did the deep fake of Obama. So key is basically saying all these things as Obama, and he and he sounds like him. He's ma- making an impersonation, and they they edited it a little bit to change the 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 audio so it sounds more like Obama. It's really weird. Hmm. It's really I I can't remember if that was featured on Comedy Central. I do remember seeing that clip though. I don't know where it is. Yeah. Maybe you can find it at some point and show people. I don't know. But yeah, it was it was weird. I for me personally, my concern is even though we have ways to like validate and verify these videos, realistically most people don't even double check their facts for like the most basic things. Mm-mm already no they don't you know so what's yeah, going to stop don't. people they... from doing these like even more extreme forms of misinformation um there's got to be a point in time where like i said people are just not going to be able to believe what they see on yeah. on the internet especially like it's it'll be really hard to to verify things and it's already getting to that point now yeah. like it's hard to really verify things on the internet and i mean you have trusted sources but i mean not all your information can come from those few sources because they don't they can't they're not capable of of sharing all the information everywhere in the world and there's going to be times you have to go to reddit for example Mm -hmm. you know you can't trust anything on reddit you can't trust anything on on tumblr you can't trust anything on instagram facebook and it'll 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 things will get worse before they get better i Mm -hmm. think there's a weird growing pain i mean i think there's hope only if like there's a cultural and academic education like i think culturally we have to learn and I think academically you kind of oh, need yeah. to have these classes in public education or whatever but and and it's also too to realize that the, this is going to happen like there's yeah. no way there's no way that you're going to be not susceptible to this and some people might might be like you know this will never happen and they'll just trust everything they see because there's no way that could be a deep fake mm-hmm. and so getting getting that understanding of you you're you may have to check sometimes you may have to double check your sources yeah like 
I don't know, but I think this is a huge tangent, but this has been a really fun <laughs> tangent. <laughs> yeah, no. That's just something I'm very like, that and like just AI things in general. I, uh, oh yeah, AI is really fun. Just cause it's so, it's affecting us already. It's not like it's gonna be in 10 years or five years or like most, most sci-fi stuff. It's like, I won't live to see that um, mm -hmm. or I'm gonna be old by the time that really affects me. Um, well, hey, in, in 1950, they they put a report in 1950. I don't remember from where, but they were basically saying, you know, calling people from a watch would be impossible. There'd be no way anyone mm -hmm. would be able to call anybody from their watch. The technology that would be required for it, the size of the microphone, the 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 circuits and wires that you would need to program a telephone to be able to call people, that'd be impossible. Yeah. And now, uh, now you can just do it yeah. right now. Yeah. Like I have a this is a Samsung watch in case. No one else can see it. Um, my Samsung watch, I can call people. I can I can text people. And that was, fifth, I mean, 60, 70 years ago. Well, I love watching, so, like, if you ever see scenes from, like, the original Star Trek series or just, like, old oh, sci-fi yeah. movies the 60s. They're, like, even they were underestimating kind of where oh, tech yeah. would be in 100 years or so. Oh, yeah. This meaning an explosion from the past 50, 60 years. Yeah. Definitely. But then again, they also thought we'd have androids by now and we're the robots. So it's oh, just yeah. interesting there's, to see where things. things go. Um, just quick tangent and then we'll get back into articles. But I was watching this real interesting video about people from 1901 and they were trying to guess where we'd be 100 years from now. And it mm -hmm. was weird how they were basically like on a 50-50 on like everything. Like they were almost oh, yeah. always 50% right and 50% wrong. I thought they'd be way more um, oh, yeah. wrong. Like they actually were underestimating a lot of things. Like they thought that it would take like two days to to from to go from New York to London. And they thought you'd go in like an airship, <laughs> like a hot air balloon, basically. Uh, huh. Like things like that. Meanwhile, it takes like five hours. Um, yeah. Little did you know. With, oh, this this one I found hilarious is they thought that the average American. So these were Americans that they were um, <laughs> it was in New York, I think they published it. But they thought that the average American would be way more healthy, way taller than the average person, which is true that people are like um, getting, just taller, yeah. getting taller and all that. But they thought that the average American could easily walk 10 miles without breaking a sweat. And that if you weren't able to walk 10 miles uh, with ease, you were can, like looked down on and shamed upon. Meanwhile, <laughs> this is like Man, the what? fattest America's Dang. ever been. <laughs> Our uh, life expectancy has been going down the past few years. So mm -hmm. a bit Dang, of a right. like there. Oh, I feel bad because it takes me a second to to really get to the, the next door street. Right now. <laughs> now I feel bad. I'm sorry, guys. I couldn't. I can maybe. I can maybe walk ten miles. Just give me a few hours. Yeah. No. Seriously. Well, a few days. setting uh, high expectations for us. Um, so, I don't have a sly slick transition for this, but um, that's okay. The next article I want to talk about was um, five thousand three hundred sixty-eight. She loves me not that. You hey. originally wrote, but then Pedagon kind of ended up taking yep, on. Yep. Um, there was a recent contest that came out. It yeah. was CupidCon mm -hmm. uh, for Valentine's Day. And um, so I wrote this article. I, I had a goal set in mind for it. And I, I was sending it to people saying like, hey, I need you guys to read this. I don't know. I don't know anything about it. And a lot of people were saying that they didn't like it. And... I was like, you know what? I'm going to try the odds. So I posted it. It survived. It was like at plus three or something. <laughs> and then I was like, you know what? Um, this is not right. This is, this is not, I'm not doing this. Um, so I deleted the article, uh, left it in my sandbox hub, sandbox page, and I wrote a tale. Mm. I, uh, it's called My Mother's Roses. It's, it's like a thousand words. Uh, it's a cold posted brights challenge to a tale. And if you don't know what that means, basically, when you when you go to post an article on the wiki, you'll there'll be a page that says this, there's no page here yet. There's no page that's existed, and so what mm. you have to do is you gotta click to edit the page, and then you'll have an edit box that pops up, and you can type in whatever. And then once you get that edit box, once you get everything in your edit box, you hit save, and it saves it to the page, and it creates a new page. Um, so people, what people usually do is that they'll go to a sandbox page. They'll make their articles, and then once they go to to post their article on the wiki, they'll just copy all of that that they on their sandbox page, then post it on the actual page, and just copy paste it to this edit box, and then hit save. Uh, so what the bright challenge is is basically, you go straight to the page that you're wanting to edit, you hit edit, 
and you just write. You just write mm. in this edit box. You don't get any. You don't get any critique. You don't get any sort of help. Uh, you just write whatever thing that you're writing, and you hit save. And usually, what you want to do is you want to save your articles often, because by saving your articles, you, you don't lose track, and you can go get a you can go get a drink somewhere, and then come back and keep writing. Mm. Um, because in the edit box, you have a certain time before it closes, mm. before the edit box just says no more. You have like 10 minutes. Wow. So you have to sit there and constantly be writing for, at, for a minimum of you know 10 minute intervals before it just stops working, before it, it closes the page. Um, so that's what I did. And I, I should preface that no one should do this. Yeah, no I don't one know should why. <laughs> ever do this sort of challenge unless you really know what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Um, but I did that. I've actually done that four times now. Um, the, the three other times is because there's a recent contest that happened this week, JamCon, yeah. and you have 24 hours to make a article or however many articles you want for a certain theme. And there were three themes, so you had three days. Um, so I, that's one of the things I did too. But anyways, this article uh, basically is a flower pot and this flower pot will grow a rose in this flower pot and you and you basically pluck the roses like the, the, she loves me she loves me not she loves me like that game and whatever whatever petal you end on whatever statement you end on the last petal whether it's she loves me or she loves me not that will that will decide dictate what you know if you're thinking about a person or if you say a person out loud that you're wanting this this game to go towards it'll determine whether that person loves you or that person doesn't love you and so this article goes to this, this story this 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 flower pot was discovered in this researcher's attic, and this researcher sends it to the foundation. Mm-hmm. And so the re- research the found the researcher gets interviewed by a, a doctor. And the doctor's like, okay, so what what is this about? What why did you get the, why did you send this here? And he goes about he goes through this huge story of his this love interest that he has, and and he's like, you know, I really had this love interest, and we we're doing so we we're doing so great. Um, here's a video that shows you how great we were together, and it goes into this video where they're going on a trip to Las Vegas, and they're and they're you know having a good time at Las Vegas. Um, if you know they're saying I love you, they're 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 hanging out at the casinos, they're they're going on a car trip, um, and so basically, he shows this doctor this research this this video. Sorry, the doctor's like, okay, well. I, I like the video, but how is this? What does this mean for the, the anomaly you sent us? Like, why did you still send it? And he's like, "Well, I tried the anomaly after you know trying to get rid of it because it it ruined his love life before in high school and middle school because he used it during his school years." He's mm-hmm. like, "Well, I put it away, and I I just wanted to love this person, I, and I I forgot about it. And so finally, when we get back, when we got that back from that trip from Las Vegas, I saw this this flower petal again in my attic, and I decided to use it against all of my my you know better judgment and and it said that she wouldn't love me anymore it's never been wrong before and so i you know i had to stop and i i didn't i couldn't date her we, we broke up and then i just finally decided to give it up and so the doctor was like okay well i understand now what you're talking about thank you for giving us this anomaly you're helping you know protect the world and all that um and that also explains why you you gave us you know it also explains the the fact that there was three petals when we found it we found three petals on it um so thank you and the the researchers are getting any he's like no 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 wait 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 hang on hang on no there were two petals left because i i clearly ended on she loves me not so it had to be an even number and the doctor is like no we we found three photos and we found three petals here and he shows them a picture that you know the that they took mm-hmm. that actually the the researcher provided because he took a photo of the 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 rose petal and all that yeah. and it shows three petals and the researcher's like i am stupid i am so dumb and he leaves the interview room and then the article ends with a text message saying you know i'm the te- researcher texting his love interest being like i am so dumb i cannot believe i did that and the, mm-hmm. the lady the the love interest is like i you didn't have to tell me that i already knew mm-hmm. so the article ends with this really wholesome final note um so but yeah um Originally, it was a bit different. Uh, originally, it was it was a bit different. The pr- presentation was was different. Uh, I wanted to take it a different route. It didn't work. And then Pentagon, he saw it, really liked the concept, really wanted to just m- f- change a few things around. Uh, took it out of my sandbox, rewrote it. Of course, he didn't really rewrite a lot of it. He just changed up some things, changed mm. the presentation of it, and then we both posted it together. And now it's, I mean, 
it's not my highest rated article, but a lot of that had to be was due to the fact that we posted it during the the contest, and it, mm -hmm. there co collaborations weren't allowed in the contest, so our article got swamped over all the other entries that were being posted posted to CupidCon, which is fine. Um, I enjoyed it, and a lot of people seem to like it too. So, yeah, it's a cool uh, concept. I like that. I'm, I don't yeah, know so how many. I'm curious. How common is that where they have like a, a holiday themed uh, contest? Uh, it depends. Um, this was the first year they started CupidCon. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not for sure if they've ever done a Halloween theme. Uh, right. Not sure if they've done anything for Christmas, but then again, the gift exchange usually happens during Christmas. So that kind of is like a Christmas Eve themed. Mm -hmm. um, 3476 actually is, was a gift exchange article. Um mm -hmm. It, it just depends, really. It depends on whether staff want to really deal with that because contests can be really stressful to yeah. set up. And, and especially with JanCon that just happened, in three days, 150 new articles were posted. Oh, my God. 150 articles were just posted. Uh, for reference, Series 4 took like – two years two and a half years mm -hmm. until all the slots were covered until all the slots were you know filled up and they had to do the 5000 contest yeah. for the si series not series four sorry series five series six um we opened up series six in like january of 2020 and it's 2021 in march and they're already going to announce another uh, a six con contest scp 6000 contest pretty soon because there's only like 150 wow. slots currently there's only 150 slots open for the series i now. didn't know that 175 i think i'm so yeah, behind so. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like i can't keep up it's all right it's all right it's hard i'm 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 well far behind well far behind i i thankfully have been just by having like you and placeholder on it's been kind of oh, giving yeah. me a little excuse to watch i mean read uh, some of the newer ones um, oh yeah this is this is basically placeholder podcast too this is the part two that you guys <laughs> hinted at this yeah. is this is it <laughs> um wow i didn't even know that i assumed it was going to take another two years i guess part of the reason why it's filling up so fast is because the the community's just been getting so much more popular over the past oh yeah three years oh yeah so. definitely definitely it's been getting popular and and just you know more people are wanting to write which is fine which is which is great yeah um it's a good thing. It's 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 fun. It's it's a good experience. And a lot of people will look at the wiki and they'll be like, you know, that's too advanced for me. I don't. Mm -hmm. I'm not comfortable with that. They'll see you know really good articles like uh, five thousand, five fifty, five thousand five hundred, five 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 five. Uh, they'll see you know three thousand eight. Uh, I'm trying to think here. They'll see five 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 two. Mm -hmm. um, They'll just see a whole bunch of really good articles and they'll be like, no, that's that's way too much. I can't do that. But really the the wiki itself is like a training ground. Like mm. you know, really what really the, the dividend that we talked about earlier is that, you know, there's an audience you're writing for now. But once you get once you get that understanding of what the audience likes and what they want and how to really articulate yourself in a way that you enjoy, um, things have become really much, much easier. Like after your first or second article, you can you can just get into it. Because you know what you're doing now, you understand that it's not as scary. There's a lot of there's a lot of you know intimidation in that first post. Um, yeah. So. I, I would also point out that we kind of talked this earlier. How we saying like the number itself really doesn't matter, um, which I agree with. But one thing I will notice is um, the older ones and each series ends up kind of loosely kind of having their own tone or vibe, and I think that has oh, to yeah. do with the fact that like each year or every other year, the, the community changes pretty quickly, especially the past few oh, yeah. years. I feel like the community is mm -hmm. very different than it was four or five years ago. Oh um, yeah, oh yeah. So there's kind of an interesting like archival or historic aspect oh, of yeah. it. Um, definitely, definitely. Which I'm actually curious, so you are talking about how p posts get deleted and stuff. Do you know, I believe there is, but do you know if there's like an archive where it has all the yes. old deleted or like old copyright images that were taken off or things like that uh it largely depends um a lot of articles that get deleted are not archived like in the newer series mm -hmm. and stuff because there's not really any need for them to stay i mean you could always use the wayback machine i think 
and you can go back and see the article oh, yeah. before it was deleted. Um, but you know, really important articles, important articles, really ones that like from the old, old, like before the wiki dot was being used, like mm -hmm. on, from edit this that were deleted, they get sometimes get archived mm -hmm. and they'll be called like SCP 049 dash ARC, which mm -hmm. means SCP 49 049 archived. And those can be accessed. Um, there's another separate site, I think separate from the foundations like yeah it's like the 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 old foundation or whatever it's called and they'll they have all the um they have all the old archived articles before the huge rewrite that happened before you know people came in and you know ch changed things if they got deleted um so i think that sometimes happens it just depends and do you have you actually tried out yourself with the Wayback Machine to see if that actually works? Uh, no, I haven't. I I remember someone saying it, whether it was an SCPD maybe. Mm. Uh, I don't remember, but I remember someone saying that you, that you could find it on the Wayback Machine. Maybe it was Dune. I don't remember. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you definitely can. I think that is something that I get a little not concerned, but I I think it's a shame to see like even bad articles get deleted into the web, especially if they're from the older series. Oh, yeah. Um, and then, I mean, this kind of opens up the topic of just anything internet related in general. Uh, if we're talking in like the span of like 100 years, it is very, very easy for like even the entire SP wiki to be like gone in 100 years mm -hmm. because there's mm -hmm. no like physical documentation going on. Oh, so. yeah. Well, well, actually, um, there's actually right now there's a project going on called Scuttle. Hmm. And it is basically backing up the wiki. Like it's basically backing up all the articles ever posted on the wiki right now. Hmm. So if it ever, if there's ever, you know, for whatever reason, wiki dot goes to crap, which it already is. Wiki dot is a terrible <laughs> platform. Yeah, Project and Foundation. Everyone, Was it the Foundation everyone Project? Everyone you, yeah, everyone you talk to, everyone you talk to about wiki dot will always say that wiki dot sucks, and it does. Yeah. It's terror. It's awful. Um, just for example. Uh, when you're writing, when you're using the edit box, talking about, there's a chance that your article will just get deleted because there will be a, there will be an error. Wiki dot sometimes doesn't handle uh, wiki, or traffic well. It doesn't really mm. handle when you when you hit save on an article. Sometimes it doesn't. It, it loops itself, and your article won't actually save. It'll just wipe everything. So there's a chance God. that you could write an entire draft, an entire article, and like if you're doing a brights challenge you're writing yeah. an entire article and you hit save it just won't save it and it'll just delete everything um so that's why people will always say you need to save a lot yeah so it doesn't like wipe the entirety of your draft anyways that's, a, that's another change um but yeah there's a scuttle project that's happening it's backing up all the pages and there's also a wiki jump wiki jump is a new is a is a project that's going on where they're basically trying to recreate wiki dot mm -hmm. um but get rid of the problems wikidot has and rid of the jank coding that it, it's on um and they're going and basically move the wiki all the pages on the wiki onto a new platform called wiki jump mm. um so that's what they're wanting to do i don't know when that's going to be done isn't that going to happen in, wasn't that called the foundation project project foundation, project foundation. it was um i think it was mm -hmm. uh I, yeah you could say that yeah i um not for sure. I think there was. I think it was a bit different. I think Project Foundation was going to be like its own website, right? Like its entire own new infrastructure, mm -hmm. new systems, and WikiJump is just basically a replatformed Wiki dot. Oh, okay, gotcha. So I, the, you can say they're the same thing. They're, they they achieve the same goal, which is getting the foundation, the Wiki off the Wiki dot platform. Yeah, because the Wiki dot platform hasn't been hasn't been worked on by any actual wiki dot admins or anything mm -hmm. for years mm. for years it hasn't been worked on and the found the scp staff they've tried everything like they've tried they've even tried purchasing wiki dot from the, the founder but yes the i did hear about that yeah the foundation the founder just didn't or the you know the creator of wiki dot just didn't care and and the, the foundation the wiki is largely responsible for almost 90 percent of wiki dots traffic really i didn't I know mean, that actually they're like no, I, I shouldn't say almost 90 i'm not really mm. for sure but a huge huge portion mm. uh I mean, I mean there's there's bruce base uh bruce base i don't know is a wiki dot uh wiki site about bruce springsteen <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> that one, uh-huh. it, it sounds stupid, uh, but it's an actual website that's actually like continuously updated. That's very um, like '90s or early 2000s. Oh no, like. it's it has so it has it has thousands and thousands and thousands of words. It goes about it goes through Bruce Springsteen's concerts. It goes wow. through his bibliography, and it's not even by Bruce Springsteen. It's like from like a series of fans. Yeah, it's a fan uh, site. It's, it's, uh, I'm trying to think of all the other. There's a few more wiki dot sites that are used, but the wiki is like a huge reason that you know it keeps getting so much traffic and internet attention. Hmm. I think I, there were like. I, what were you gonna say? No, I, I was gonna say I just think there's like, tw- like several thousand users. Not several thousand, of course. I I'm gonna jump. I'm gonna jump out there and say it was like twenty thousand signed on users like what like registered users for the the foundation mm-hmm. for like the wiki i'm not for sure on that it could be a little less um but they're like twenty thousand or something like users who have signed up to wiki dot or to to the scp wiki who have applied like, for the site like that's the accounts like not like currently active yeah. on oh, I'd be, oh yeah that's just the, more actually i'm kind of surprised well but I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not for sure i haven't checked it again i mean scp 173 which is just a really bad article i mean it's good and that is a historical <laughs> yeah. piece but if you if you're looking at it from a 2020 lens mm-hmm. and looking at it it's really bad um that one has like six thousand or something upvotes like wow. it's the it's it's the uh single most upvoted thing on the wiki which is not surprising it's yeah. the most iconic thing um but but anyways that's no huge tangent We're going on a huge tangents today <laughs> no, that's that's all what this podcast is all about um sweet I'm, I really hope I, I should look into the Project Scuttle stuff because the thing I'm really concerned about is like, uh, have you seen Blade Runner 2049? No, so unfortunately not. One one like really small, this is not a spoiler, it's like a small plot point in 2049 is they reference how there was a great blackout. And basically what happened was the earth was hit by a huge solar flare. And for people who don't know, solar flares are basically like a huge release of ionized radiation. And what that does is mm-hmm. that'll destroy pretty much all processors, any like electronics that aren't protected oh, yeah. by, I believe, a cop- a copper casing. Um, so obviously like the military, a lot of government stuff, they have special um, anti like solar flare, um, um, like hardware so that it won't get wiped out by a solar flare. Or as most other people know, an EMP. So basically if, you, if a uh, nuclear weapon goes off in the apparatus mirror, that will also destroy um, servers, computers, any any like non mm-hmm. any digitized type of stuff. So basically, send us back to like the fifties. Um, so that that also goes to like hospital. That also goes to yep. like hospital Medical emergency records devices. It goes, yeah, like mm-hmm. no, like people would be people would die and and like be dying in hospitals because their life support systems would just crash. Yep. It would just it's it's scary. Heart like, pumps, all the infrastructure, just so much. Oh stuff. yeah. But for me, like I like pacemakers. Yeah, pacemakers. It's crazy. But like for me, it's so simple and so easy just to like have paper copies. And like because we're such mm-hmm. a global community, we could just like, hey, like, hey, one staff member, can you just have like paper copies in Germany? I'll have mine in New York. You can have one in California. Mm-hmm. So that way archive them. Yeah. So that way we have physical hard hard like hardware or hard um eye drives. Um, I know what some people are doing is, um, I think the Bill Gates Foundation, what they're trying to do is they're actually trying to inscribe it, or like not everything, but a lot of very culturally significant websites and things like that. They're trying to inscribe certain information onto quartz disc, I think. So that mm-hmm. like, I think they specifically pick quartz because it doesn't like age, like stone or stuff. Like it ages very, very, very slowly. Um, and then like also when you look back in history and stuff, most stuff that you find is either because it's written in stone or was written on leather, or was written on like papers, papyrus scrolls. So, mm-hmm. I, I'm just a little like concerned about how quickly we've digitized everything, and how a lot of people just think that'll be around when literally there are oh, machines yeah. from the 70s and 80s that we don't have access to anymore because we don't know how to read those files. So there's actually mm-hmm. a whole project that's going on where they're trying to figure out to basically rebuild the hardware. So they can read those like they're basically oh, yeah. kind of like floppy disks or something like that. Oh yeah, but it, you don't even have to go that far back. It's already happening. So the only problem I see with that would be um, format screws and 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 articles that rely heavily on um, you know cascading yeah. script 
-hmm. Like if you have, you see the articles where you you're going through and you're clicking and things are changing on yeah. the page as you read it, that would be really hard to replicate on paper. I think it, it, unless you, it'd be like a compromise essentially where it's like, Hey, oh, yeah. it's like explaining a joke. It, it's not going to have the same effect. Um, yeah, definitely. Definitely. But the way I see it is it could almost be like instructions so that if we get the tech and the computers back up and running, we can just recreate it to oh, its yeah. original state. Oh, yeah. um, but anyway, uh, doom and gloom uh, aside, <laughs> <laughs> um, for the JamCon, do you want to talk about what you recently just wrote? Uh, I can. Um, I can't guarantee that they're going to be up. Excuse me. Uh, I can't be. I can't guarantee that they'll be up for long. Um, I might think about rewriting a few of my entries, but the first article I wrote was for theme one, uh, theme one for jam con would be, was Marine. Cause all we got was Marine. So we had to write something that was, had Marine stuff okay. in it. So 5883, SCP 5883 called, uh, heaven has been breached is basically there is a day is occurring on March 22nd, 2021, where, uh suddenly there's a huge flash of light that that encompasses the world and everyone freaks out of this huge flash of light because it happens for like four seconds mm. like everyone just sees this huge flash of light everyone's freaking out what just happened uh, you know police are getting called and for whatever reason the foundation systems they don't they don't register that something has happened so there's no like there's no sa fail safe protocols that happen mm -hmm. um and so then ever like a few minutes after this huge flash of light happens people notice these things are coming down from the sky. They're noticing that these, these, these small UFOs are coming down from the sky, heading towards the surface of the earth and everyone's freaking out and panicking. Like, what are these, what are these things? I don't, we don't understand what's happening. There's calls yeah. being called to the police. People are going online, live streaming it. Um, and then as they th need to get closer, as these entities get closer, the foundation becomes aware of these, these UFOs. Like everyone sees them. There's millions of them all around the world. Um, as they as it get as it gets closer, they realize that these things have wings and they're they're entities. They're mm. not they're not UFOs. They're actual legit entities. And then they come down. They keep coming down. And finally, they, these entities stop like t a few meters above the ground, like above everyone else. And and they realize that these are angels. Like all of these are are different types of angels uh, from from thrones from. Uh, I can't remember all of the angels' names. Uh, uh, Nephilim. Um, Cherubium? I don't, I don't remember. But these angels, they come down to this earth and they just start talking. They just start speaking in this in, in this language. It's called Enoshian. I don't even know if that's an actual angelic language. Uh, Enoshian was believed to be in, in an angelic language at some point in the hmm. past. You know uh, I don't know if that's the case. Um, basically, these, these angels just start talking. They're just saying stuff. They're saying, like, we are your saviors. We're here to save you. And everyone just stops talking. Everyone just listens to these angels. Everyone stops recording. Everyone stops, you know, using internet. And so they're they're saying we're going to save you. You know, repent, rejoice, uh, relinquish. And so finally, after a few minutes of them talking in this language, they just go back up to the sky. They just go back up to he the the sky and they disappear. And everyone just everyone on the planet just starts walking. No, they don't talk. They just start walking to the coasts, and they just go into the coasts and then just they never they never come back everyone just just dives into the the oceans and they just never come back up they all drown in these oceans and everyone who was aware and active and saw the, the the event happening this this is what happened and everyone who didn't who wasn't aware of it who was either asleep they were they were unable to move they just all die from natural causes they just mm -hmm. die from you know not being able to eat like uh, newborn babies would die from not being able to eat or people on life support system would die because you know the power would cut out because no more no more electricity no one's fueling the, the electrical systems and so what happens is that this one researcher who happened to be asleep on the job uh totally misses this event and now he's stuck in this 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 site and he's stuck at his site and he doesn't know what's happening but because he's had training he shuts down the site he shuts down everything he's like i don't know what's happening but i'm locked myself in here and i don't know what i'm supposed to do because this is not normal like he doesn't know what's happened yet but he knows that because there's nobody in there there's nobody in the site he, he goes and checks and no one's at the site he's he panics and he locks everything down so he locks himself in the security office, and the security office is 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 logged into Sk the Skype net interface. It's he's it's logged into the Foundation mm -hmm. database. So from there he 
he learns about what's happening in the world and he, he writes the, the, the document that the reader is reading. He writes it all down and he's like, okay, what am I supposed to do? Like, what, what in the hell am I supposed to do now that there's, there's nothing here? That everyone, everyone is dying. I'm like, thankfully, th th it was a one-time thing, but I don't know what's outside. I don't know why there's, everyone's done this. I don't know what's happening. And so it goes in and he's like, you know, I don't know if this is right. I don't know if, what, if I should stay locked up in here. And at the same time, he's like, I'm starting to hear things. I'm starting to hear scratching. I don't know what it is. There's scratching. There's there's groaning outside. I don't I don't, I don't know what's happening. So he, and he's going through it. He's going through the motions, and finally, he's like, I didn't realize that the site that I'm in has security cameras. I I know what's causing these noises now, and it's basically along the horizon. There's a bunch of people just standing along the horizon, and then finally, the article ends with him, you know, playing like, what if? What if I should just go outside? Like, what, what am I doing? I've, I've been locked in here for weeks. Why don't, why don't I just go outside? And then the final ends, he's like, what's the worst that can happen? And then the final log ends was like, you know, what's the worst that can really happen? And so the article ends like that. Mm. I want to do a whole lot more. I'm not, I'm not, that article in particular is probably going to be rewritten at some point. I wanted to do a lot more with the character. I wanted to do a lot more... Uh, I wanted to do a lot with his personality, going into like him being afraid of his family, being afraid for his family, like using the the inner the database to peer into his house to look to see if you know where they are, to see you know if the baby that they just had is still alive or not, and seeing that it isn't, and like trying to show that character development. Um, he's on Earth, I to, right? Yeah, he's still. Yeah. This is all on Earth. This is okay. all happening, and everyone just explicitly drowns themselves in the ocean mm -hmm. for no reason. Um, after these angels come to he come to Earth, um, and I wanted to also, uh, while I'm talking about it, I also wanted to make a connection that you know heaven was officially breached, like you know the powers, the evil powers that be somehow got influenced heaven and made all the the angels go down and you know kill everybody off, like you know Satan and you know God or whatever mm -hmm. get to a fight. I wanted to do so much more with it, but I only had 24 hours, yeah. and I actually posted that entry five minutes before the deadline. So I had to hurry up and write oh, okay, everything. Gotcha. I had it. so I'm just gonna throw an oh. idea out here and feel free okay. if you ever want to go with it or not. But I just thought it'd be interesting if uh, somewhat like an astronaut from the ISS or like if there's a moon base, if there's an SB moon base to be viewing all the events going down from the moon. Oh, that would be cool. And then basically cool like idea. I could see ending where like the angels are now coming to the moon. So oh, yeah. this is kind of oh, like yeah. waiting out. Mm -hmm. Um, that would be a cool idea. I might, yeah. I might have to, I might have to use that. That is a cool. Feel idea. free to take it if that. you like it. So here. Okay, <laughs> I might. It's quickly turning into Doctor Stone, the. Uh, oh yeah, the yeah, yeah. Anime. <laughs> yeah. Um, the the second po article that I showed you, um, that one, that one is for the theme called corruption. Mm -hmm. It's a GOI format for Are We Cool Yet? Mm -hmm. There's a group of interest. Yeah, Are We yeah. Cool Yet? And these this group Are We Cool Yet? They have expos that happen every ten years. And they have these entries that get submitted to the expo where the, you know, you, you submit these, these entries and they have like the materials that you need, what you're wanting to do and why you're doing it. And you, and you submit this format and it basically they're like entries to go into this expo. So this article, the second one, this GOI format is called Project Proposal 2014-12, Portraits of the Trees. And so it basically goes into this person wanting to do a, an, a performance where they have their performer in this this room, in an exhibit room, and they're going to basically tell them that they have to recreate this painting that he made. They have to recreate this painting. And so as she's remaking this painting, um, there's a gas going inside of this this room, making it so she's more paranoid, so she doesn't know, so the room is closing in around her. Um, so she's she's trying to remake, recreate this painting, um, and when she's done recreating it, she's supposed to show the audience. She's supposed to show the the, the director, the guy who's actually doing the proposal. Um, and it's up to him whether or not he likes it or not. And if he likes it, she's free to leave. She's free to get out. He and he's going to cancel the performance. He'll cancel the performance. No one else is gonna. No one. There's no performance. He's gonna withdraw his submission to the, the this expo that they're holding. But if she doesn't, and if he doesn't like what she she makes, he's going to tell her to rewrite it again or to redo it again. And for every failure, she he's going to inject her with you know, these drugs that's going to make her panic and it's going to make her, you know, scared and frightened. Mm -hmm. And so 
the the trick here is that she, he's never going to be satisfied with her paintings. Um, so he's always he's just continually injecting her with all these drugs, and she's also getting pumped up with all of this 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 gas that's making the rooms close in around her, and it's it gets really dark. <laughs> um, so basically, the audience is supposed to then realize that this is a whole this entire situation is futile. Like there's no way that she's going to do this. And on the table where she's doing all of her work, the the director also leaves a gun with one round in it. And, and then the, the proposal is like, so once that gun goes off, like she's free to use that gun at any time, wherever she feels like it. Like once she uses that gun, though, that's the end of the performance. And so mm -hmm. you're supposed to assume that, you know, she uses the gun against herself mm -hmm. because she can't do it correctly. And so the next part of the, the, the article goes into the intent, like why the director is wanting to do this. And he goes into it and he's like, you know, isolation is a powerful thing. Like I was I was isolated as a child. My mother saw this gift in me like i had this gift when i ever whenever i did paintings my my work would would make the people feel however i felt as i did the painting so if i had a heart happy drawing that i made the person who saw the drawing would also be happy like they would feel that that happiness as like an anomalous trait mm -hmm. this is he's an an artist um and so basically you learn about you learn the fact that this this mother abused this child and made them make all these paintings all these paintings because she was getting high off the euphoria that that the, the child had when he made these paintings and he, and he had the same this one painting that he always made was the trees outside his window because it brought him happiness mm -hmm. so he's constantly making these paintings for his mom and and finally he, he breaks it he leaves for whatever reason and then the and further along he realized that he kidnaps his mother again and, and and forces his mother to do this for the exhibit and then he's like you know i don't understand why my mom wouldn't think that i wouldn't do this to her like the apple doesn't fall far from the tree like she she did this to me as a child and i don't know why she would she wouldn't think that i wouldn't do this to her like I, she she ruined everything for me she ruined me getting friends she ruined me being able to have a, a good life all because she wanted to get high off all my photos all my paintings and then at the very end he's like you know but i'm not really like my mother because Little does she know, like, I'm not like my mother. I, I left the door to the room that she's, the performance room, I'll leave the doors unlocked. So at any point in time, she'll be able to leave. She'll be able to leave. I won't stop her and I'll cancel my performance. I'll cancel everything. Mm. And then he's like, but you don't have to worry because she she won't leave. She won't leave the, the, the performance room. She won't leave the exhibit because we have the same blood in our veins, right? Like we are the same pe person and she will not stop drawing because, you know, she won't stop. She won't. She won't. Because I wouldn't stop my drawings because mm -hmm. I was persistent. She's also persistent like me, and she and, and, and it concludes with this guy telling the 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 hosts of the expo like you don't have to worry. She won't. She won't do anything else. Not until she finishes her portrait of the trees. That is, and then it just ends. Interesting. Um, I, I always so, find yeah. there's like that. Oh, it's like the sick cruelness of like oh you could have walked out at any point. Oh yeah. yeah, that's what I wanted to do. There's a, um, a false so, illusion of being trapped. Mm -hmm. And then the final one, I'll, I'll make it short because mm -hmm. I know you're probably running out of time here. Um, yeah. It's called Prologue. It's a it's an it's a prologue for an upcoming series I'm writing. Um, the series will be called Ghosts on the Wires, and it basically talks about this guy, this this researcher and his partner going into the house of a of a conspiracy theorist. And they go into this house and they basically find that there's this, there's this computer and this 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 person that died. He's a he's a photographer journalist, and for one some reason he died. He he bursts into flames one day and dies. And this is like the fourth time this has happened to like a photographer who's who's active on like website forums and stuff. And so it basically it's basically an introduction to my series. And the base the series itself will be about uh, a new hacktivist cult group. Um, that has a god that they're worshiping and it's basically like like, like i said a hacktivist cult group mm -hmm. um and they're they're trying to re resurrect a god and this this researcher is is trying to go after them trying to realize figure out what's happening um i don't want to spoil too much about it because i'm excited to write it but that one that one was my final entry and the final entry for the jam con the final theme was um what possibly what could possibly go wrong that was the theme um, his famous last words. So that at the end of that article, it concludes with the, the researcher being like, well, what could possibly happen? Take the computer because we're inside of his house mm -hmm. um, doing forensics. And he's like, just take the computer. What's the worst that could possibly happen? Which is, this is like a juxtaposition to it being a prologue. What's the worst that could possibly happen? And then the series will continue. So yeah, that, yeah. That's the worst that could actually happen. It goes bad. It goes on and on and on. And so that's that one, that, that's my final entry. Yeah. Cool. Well, uh, thank you. 
people go read it. Hopefully they upvote it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, favorite article, because I know you brought this up to me. Yeah. Uh, 3393, For Your Eyes Only, by Captain Kirby. is a fantastic mm. article. It's written in the second person, which means that um, – it, it talks about it, it says you like every you know how articles will be like SCP is yeah, yes, X yeah. SCP is Y it's basically SCP three three nine three is you you are SCP three three nine three um, I'm not gonna spoil it because it's a really fun article to read it's really short too mm-hmm. um, so it's it's really good it's it's my favorite article on site easily um, yeah go check it out uh, is there any last things you want to shout out before we wrap uh, things up. Um, I'm going to shout out, I'm not going to shout out one author in particular because that'd be kind of unfair. I'm going to shout out the SCP declassified discord server because those, that place has two hundreds of authors that are active and online. And if you're ever interested in writing, um, interested in learning more about a piece, uh, I would head over there. I'd head to the subreddit, go on their discord server and I would, I would, you know, get become acquainted with all the authors i'm always in there yep. uh placeholder is always in there uh some of the some really good authors like uh sd lock shaggy dreadlocks rounder house is in there dj cactus is in there yep. um all a, a huge portion of authors are in there i'm guaranteed an article that you enjoy or like the author will be in that discord server so you should definitely check it out uh, see what people have to offer see, uh, offer, see what new things are coming out. Um, there's new authors come and go all the time. Uh, so it's, it's a good place to be. I'll shout out that um, because shouting out uh, one work in particular or one author in particular seems kind of unfair. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one, especially if you want to get into any sort of writing. Oh, yeah. I highly recommend you go there. Check mm-hmm. it out. Of course. All right. Well, so you're also in there. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm also there. Yeah. Um, so thanks for coming on. It was fun. It's good to have you. Yeah. Um, yeah. And thanks guys for watching. Um, don't know when this one will come out. Uh, just cause we got a couple going on. It's been a crazy month. A lot of people have been hopping on, but, uh, uh, do you have any, like for the jam cons, just cause I was telling people to read those. Uh, are they very, very time sensitive? Cause I know you were saying that 24 hour time zone. Well, they will have, all of them have already been posted. All, okay. all three entries have been posted. Um, and because it's only been 24 hours per entry, like mm-hmm. uh, not per entry, but because there's only 24 hours to submit something, a lot of the works are really, really short. Okay. Um, like really short. So a lot of mine, like I usually write 2,000 to 6,000 word pieces and all of mine are below 1,500, like okay. super, super short. So yeah, give them some love. Check them out. Um, yeah. And thanks for coming on. 50 of them. So. Thanks, man. Yeah. Thank, thank you for having me. Yeah. Peace. Peace. <laughs>